prism 1 of mass m1 and uh, with an angle alpha um, you can see this figure um, rests on uh, a horizontal surface bar 2 of mass m2 is placed on the prism assuming the friction to be negligible um, find the acceleration of the prism so this triangle shaped thing is the prism okay so the first thing uh, um, almost any Newton's laws of motion problems uh, uh, demand is is a free body diagram okay so there are two objects so there's going to be um, two free body diagrams so the first one would be um, our little uh, uh, bar here of mass m2 so I'm going to draw the forces in orange okay so there's of course the very force which keeps us alive actually um, okay uh, uh, the gravity gravitational force okay uh, so and we also know that this angle here this angle here is alpha um, I'm going to draw, draw a refined version of uh, this uh, uh, this free body diagram um, but just uh, bear with me okay so there is a there is also a normal force from the from the prism I'll call that N um, and uh, I don't think any anything else is there um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve um, this uh, gravitational force in two directions one which is along this uh, the normal uh, along the normal and one is along the path along which it it travels um, actually not not quite you'll see about that um, so um, this is a re refined version of that same free body diagram so there's going to be there's going to be three forces here so there's uh, this force there is a normal force and there is a radial force like so and actually I forgot to mention there is going to be one more force which is called the pseudo force um, you 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 might you might have studied this but uh, I haven't discussed about it yet but it, it is kind of the force which you experience uh, uh, which is unreal actually you know uh, you're standing in a train the uh, train accelerates accelerates suddenly and you feel a jerk as if someone is pushing on you so that is uh, what is called a pseudo force uh, and that frame is what is called a non-inertial frame and uh, that is because the frame is itself accelerated now uh, uh, imagine that I sit on top of this prism here and I watch the bar go how will how will the bar move um, well according to me it's just going to move like that right uh, just uh, actually opposite just like that but if you if you do this practically you will see that the prism goes in uh, not this kind of way but somewhat this it goes uh, um, not not at an angle alpha but uh, an, uh, an angle a, a bit more than that so there's going to be one more force which is called the pseudo force and that force will be equal to the mass of the bar mass of the bar mass of the bar um, I'll, write, yeah, I'll drop this off okay the mass of the bar which is m2 times a of the prism um, I'll write a p there uh, acceleration of the prism uh, uh, okay uh, and uh, there's uh, this normal force here uh, this component if I break this into this part uh, the two parts of this m2g then this part is m2g cosine of alpha and this part is m2g times the sine of alpha times the sine of alpha okay uh, we are done with uh, the the free body diagram of the bar now we are left with the plank I'm sorry the, the prism so let's draw it this is my prism this is my prism okay I'm going to draw the forces in white okay there's of course 
its own weight which is m1g there is a normal reaction from the ground which I'll call n prime and there is the normal reaction from the from the, uh, the the bar which is n this n is the same as this n and that is because uh, uh, these two normals are interior forces um, or internal forces so the Newton's third law says that uh, there there is always action reaction pairs so if if, if this uh, normal reaction acts towards uh, the northwest uh, on the on the bar then it should act towards the southeast uh, kind of the opposite direction uh, to the to the prism okay so that's all there is to it um, this is my free body diagram for the first uh, first body this is for the second body uh, and this is the acceleration of the prism okay now let's draw uh, let's uh, write the force equation for the for the bar uh, let's see uh, so this angle is going to be alpha right this angle is going to be alpha okay so in this uh, I'll call this as my x-axis or my y-axis and I'll call this as my x-axis so along y along y um, there's going to be a component of the pseudo force there's going to be normal and there's going to be mg m2g cosine of alpha and they're going to balance because I'm in an accelerated frame for which I have considered already the pseudo force so in my frame this only moves like this so it's it is not moving uh, nowhere uh, along the along the y direction so the forces along that y direction must be zero which implies that uh, n plus the component of uh, the pseudo force along y direction which is m2 ap times the sine of alpha times the sine of alpha sine of alpha god sine of alpha uh, and that should be equal to that is that is in the positive y direction forces and that should be equal to the negative y direction forces and that is there is only one that is m2g cosine of alpha so we've got our first equation and now there's one more equation um, which is along the positive x direction uh, so there's going to be two forces which uh, act along the uh, along the x x uh, axis there's going to be a component of this pseudo force along the x axis and there's going to be of course this um, obvious force which is m2g sine of alpha so m2 ap times the cosine of alpha is the component of the pseudo force along this direction okay and that force adds up with m2g sine of alpha because they are in the same direction and that should be equal to ma that is because this is the force and f equals ma that is the Newton's second law so that should be equal to the mass of the of the bar which is m2 times a uh, b let's say acceleration of the bar and we need to find just the acceleration of the prism so we need to somehow eliminate a b okay so that is my second equation okay what else have i got uh so these two equations i'll write it here these two equations are for the bar and now we go to the prism and for the prism I claim that uh, I claim that this force is going to perfectly balance out this force and that is because again this uh, and now I'm in ground frame uh, this uh, prism is just moving to the uh, to the right or the left I mean it's along only the uh, only the horizontal uh, axis so the forces along the y direction must be zero so n prime would be equal to m1g um, but that won't help me a lot so I won't write it down so the thing that will help me is this normal force and I know that this angle here um, which one 
this angle. This angle is alpha. Since this angle is also alpha, you can prove that by geometrical uh, geometrical properties of triangles. Um, I won't prove it here, but you can do it yourself. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, actually, they don't cancel out n prime and mg, uh, but the component of n along uh, this purple direction will perfectly balance the sum of the n prime as well as m1g. Uh, what I mean to say is there is no total force along the y direction. So we don't need to care about it. Um, so I'll just care about the horizontal uh, direction forces, um, which luckily is only one, is uh, the component of n along the x-axis, which is n times the sine of alpha, right? There's only one component. That is n times the sine of alpha. And that should provide the acceleration of the prism. So that should be equal to m. This is f, right? So f equals ma. Um, so this one must be equal to m1, which is the mass of the prism, times a of p, which is the acceleration of the prism. OK. Um, now we have enough equations. And you can check that. Um, I'll just write down this is for the prism. And you can check uh, that we have enough equations to solve for the acceleration of the prism since we have three unknowns here. One is n. We don't know the magnitude of it. We don't know what else. We don't know AP, that is the acceleration of the prism. And we don't know AB, which is the acceleration of the bar. Um, we need to somehow eliminate that thing right there. Um, we'll do that in a moment. OK. So we don't need to find n right so let's just substitute it and eliminate this thing right here so if I solve this equation I'll get that n is equal to m1 ap times 1 by sine alpha uh, sine alpha which is the cosecant of alpha okay now let's bring this equation down and let's bring this equation down and let's substitute what we have for n in this equation here so n, but n is this thing, m1 ap cosecant of alpha plus m2 ap times the sine of alpha Oops. times the sine of alpha and that should be equal to m2g times the cosine of alpha. Um, so far what I've done is just substitute n because I didn't need it. Um, I could find it later on, but I don't need to because the question didn't ask for me, right? Um, uh, I could find it because once I find AP, I'll just substitute AP here and I'll get the n, but we don't need that so far. Um, if, they, if, if they would have asked, then we would have solved for it. So I'll just mark AP here and you will see that this is just a linear equation in one variable. So we can solve for AP. So we can factor out an AP here. And inside, we will get M1 cosecant of alpha plus M2 sine of alpha. And that is all equal to M2g cosine of alpha. So let's just divide by um, this expression, uh, divide both sides by this expression. So we get that, uh, we get that AP, the acceleration of the prism, which we needed to find out, is equal to M2, it's too dark, M2G cosine of alpha divided by M1 cosecant of alpha plus plus m2 sine of alpha. There we have it. Um, we have solved the, uh, the, the problem. We need, needed to find the acceleration of the prism. And now, um, if we wanted to, we could find the acceleration of the bar as well as the normal force which um, acts between these, bar, uh, these, these bodies. And that could be done by easily, uh, that could be done easily by substituting the value of AP, which we just got in the second equation 
here you can substitute the value of AP and you can divide by M2 if you want and you can solve for AB and I won't do that because they haven't asked us and similarly if you uh, when we have got AP we can just substitute this value here and we'll get the normal reactions magnitude so yeah that was pretty long um, this required uh, the knowledge of pseudo forces um, actually you could have done it without that but it is kind of very very helpful uh, to know that concept because it's kind of you uh, kind of uh, the thing that we experience in our daily lives right um, we experience that that sudden jerk um, so you can you can imagine that if the train moves in that direction suddenly then you yourself feel the force in the backward direction so that's what this is all about um, that's why I took uh, the force uh, and that force is called the pseudo force okay and that force that's why I took the force to be in this direction here the opposite direction to the acceleration of the prism acceleration of the prism is to the right but the force on the on the on the bar due to that acceleration the pseudo force due to that uh, acceleration is towards the left it's just the opposite um, so yeah um, this, was, this was pretty long uh, I'm tired I know you are also tired uh, so I'll see you in the next video